Hi, Timothy Unger here. In this video, I'm going to make a website using Sublime Text. Now, I am teaching as a math teacher currently, and um, I've been thinking of putting up a, a, a website for the students, upslopemath.com, and I've been thinking, how do I create a website that's easy to maintain, because I do have other responsibilities, but that looks decent. So. This video is just going to be raw from scratch where I'm building a website. I'm going to go through the process with you. I'm doing it on a Chromebook. It's a cheap Chromebook from Walmart that I bought last year for about 200 bucks. Um, I've enabled Linux. I have videos of that on my channel in case you're wanting to do that. You do have to enable Linux to install Sublime Text. Sublime Text is a paid product but it has an unlimited free trial period and it costs $99 for a personal license for three years. So it's about $33 a year. It's really not much. I use it a lot. I use some of the JetBrains stuff. You'll see that on my channel. Um, for me, it's worth it. You can make that decision or use some other free text editor to follow along. Maybe the new Atom, which is Pulsar or VS Code or one of those. Um, but anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. So let's get started. Let's open up a terminal here. I'm going to list out my storage. I have no folders. This is a fresh Linux install for this video. So I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call that upslope math. And I'm going to change into that directory. So cd into upslope math. And I'm going to open sublime in that directory with subl space and a dot. Okay. All right. So it's going to open sublime text. I have a Monokai Plus uh, light theme here. So I'm going to create a new file and we always want to start off by creating an index.html file. So I'm going to save this as index.html. Okay. All right. Now Sublime has a nice little shortcut where I can get some boilerplate code. But for those who are watching this video to learn HTML, I think it's best if I just go through a bunch of the tags and you'll see the code. All right, so we're gonna start with a doc type declaration. So I can do doc type HTML. And when I go here, uh, the doc type can be lowercase, but a lot of times you'll see it uppercase. If I wanna do that, I'll hold down shift and hit control highlight the world word and do control K control U and that uh, uppercase is it. it's a nice sublime shortcut. Okay. So we've declared the doc type that lets the browser know that this is an HTML five document. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is create an opening HTML tag. Okay. And I'm going to go down a bit and close out the tag. Okay. And you'll notice here, notice what happened here when I, hit this um, less than symbol and then a forward slash, it just auto completed the closing tag for me. So that's a nice thing that Sublime, Sublime Text does. Okay, uh, so I need an opening and a closing HTML tag. And in HTML, a lot of the tags are opening and closing. There are some self-closing tags. We can get to that as I go along, okay? Now the typical body or the typical HTML document has a head and a body. So let's create an opening head tag. Okay. And I like to go down and make sure I close it out. So notice it's giving me the suggestion that if I hit tab, well, it's going to give me the head closing and opening. I don't want that. But if I start to type head and hit enter, uh, that would close it out. But I like this shortcut that Sublime has. So this less than and then the forward slash. And then it closes it out and indents it properly for me. OK, uh, so we have our opening and closing head tag. And within that, it's important to have a title tag. OK, so you want to have an open and closing title tag. And notice all these tags have a less than basically symbol here. They call it Chevron, I think, uh, a greater than symbol here. And then the name of the tag in between. And then the closing tag has this slash here. That's the difference between the opening and closing tag. OK, now within these two tags, I do want to put my title. So I'm going to go to home and then I'm going to put a pipe here and you can do it. There's different things that people do. Sometimes they put a hyphen, but I've seen pipes a lot. And then just the name of the website. So upslopemath.com. OK, so that's my title. OK, now the 
in the head of the document, most of the meta tags and all that stuff, you won't see it um, when you open this in a browser, okay? And we're gonna open this on a local computer. I'm gonna save this, and you'll notice this turns to an X here when I save it. It's a circle before. And I'm gonna go here, and what I'm gonna do is run a uh, server with Python. Chromebooks, when you enable Linux, they have Python installed. And to do that, I'm just gonna type Python 3, a space, dash M, and then HTTP dot server, and hit enter. Okay, so now we're serving on port 8000. So I can open up my browser, and I can go here to local host 8000, okay? And when I go to local host 8000, we see a blank page, all right? So we have stuff in the head of the document, but that's not showing up, okay? And, well, if we go back, we do see one thing that's showing up in the head of the document. Right here in the tab, we see home, and if I hover over it, you see home, the pipe, upslopemath.com. So that's where our title is. That's what we're going to see for coming from the head of the document. Nothing else, though. Okay, so now in now we're going to create the body of the document. So we have an opening body tag and a closing body, ta body tag. And now within the body tags, you can have headings, levels of headings. There's six different levels of headings. The... Uh, largest heading is an H1. By default, there's some styling that comes along, but you shouldn't use the level heading to create the styling. But by default, there is the H1 tag is the largest. Uh, for SEO purposes, you should have one of those uh, per page. And then the H2s are subheadings of the H1. You have a few of those per page. The H3s are subheadings of the uh, H2, and so on. Some websites only have H1s, H2s, and H3s, or even H1s and H2s. Okay, to show those, I'm gonna do H1 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna type that this is a first level heading, and I'm gonna close the H1 tag, and then I'm gonna do Control-Shift-D to duplicate this line six times here. And what I can do is place my cursor here and then hold down control and place the cursor here. And I have double cursors. So if I hit a backspace and two, um, you'll see that I have an H2. Go down one, H3, down one, H4, down one, H5, down one, H6. Okay, now we want to change these words here. So we're going to say second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth level heading. Now let's save that. Now that's gonna show up. When I go back here and I refresh, do Control Shift R, we have our headings showing up with our first level heading being the largest all the way down to our sixth level heading, okay? Now, again, you should use CSS to style the size. Getting some coffee, all right. Okay, so, and that's headings. Now you can also have paragraphs. Now that's a P tag. So we have an opening paragraph tag and we can say this is a paragraph and then we want to close our tag for the paragraph tag. Now if I go back here, refresh, we see that this is a paragraph. It shows up right there. Okay. So we have our headings and our paragraphs. All right. Uh, in the head of the document, there's a few other things that I should be including. Uh, for uh, mobile optimization for SEO and, and for special characters. So for special characters, we want to create a meta tag. And I'm going to make a comment that um, I'm going to have these meta tags here. So I can make a comment in Sublime by doing a control forward slash. And then you'll see that we have this less than an exclamation, two hyphens, two hyphens this way and a greater than. And you put our comment in here. Now I'm using Fura code as my font, so I have ligatures that kind of uh, fade this in, but it's really two hyphens here after the exclamation, then two hyphens before, and the chevron. But Sublime and many other text editors have a nice shortcut, which is control forward slash. Okay, so I'm going to make a comment here, and this is not going to show up anywhere in the uh, 
browser is going to ignore it, but it's for humans. So I'll say that uh, 